Welcome to Into the Planet. I'm Jill Heinerth. Join me for scuba diving tips, tricks, and exciting expedition files. For the life of me, I can't figure out why North American divers rarely dive with helmets. Whether you're in an overhead environment of a cave, a wreck, under ice, or driving a scooter, a helmet's gonna protect your head, so it's critical safety equipment. Here's a few tips that you have to think about before purchasing or building up your own helmet. First, helmets like this bicycle helmet might look cool, but they're not exactly suitable for diving. They're made of foam, and there's no amount of lead applied to this helmet that's gonna make it sink or be comfortable on your head. A foam helmet will either pull up on the underside of your chin and your neck with the strap system, or you're gonna to have to weight it so much that it's simply not going to be usable. You need a different style of helmet. If you turn to the climbing and safety organizations, these helmets are much more suitable for modification into a diving helmet. They have a suspension system on the inside that's not made of foam. Literally, the straps sit on top of your head. It's still great for impact resistance, but it's not gonna float. They also have a circumference band, like a headband that's adjustable. So whether you're wearing a really lightweight, like Lycra hood, or a nine millimeter neoprene for cold water, you can adjust this to fit properly for the diving application you're using it for. This one from PMI is a typical climber's helmet and it's terrific. It's got some vented holes which serve another purpose. These vents, they'll allow bubbles to get out but they'll also allow you to mount lights to the helmet without altering the structural integrity of the helmet. On this particular helmet, using the mounting holes, um, we can either add a metal band um, to clamp down on some lights or it's possible to use um, a couple of zip ties to hold things in position um, or you can weave bungee cord in and out of these holes anchor it down and then slide the light in so that you can easily remove it and replace it when you're diving if you do that method I suggest putting a clip on the back of the light and clipping the clip to the bungee or some other place so that if it slips out of the bungee straps, it's still clipped to your helmet and you're not gonna lose it. You'll notice on this particular helmet, I've actually mounted the lights in a way that doesn't exactly look symmetrical. This forward light, this Gobi searchlight, has a very wide beam and it points straight ahead when I'm swimming so it can illuminate the environment that I'm swimming through. This light on my left hand side is pointing down and it's more of a spotlight. It's a goby spot from light and motion. And with this one, I can look at the slate on my wrist, look at a computer that doesn't have a backlight or use my notebook and write a note and have that easily illuminated. Other helmets like this one are a little lighter weight in their design and they might be really suitable for um, travel when you're trying to get the airline weight down to a sheer minimum. The nice thing about this is the wheel for adjustment in the back of the helmet and that makes it really easy to switch from a thick, thick hood to a thin little one and still fit you comfortably so that it stays snug on your head. Make sure that the chin strap is long enough and comfortable enough to come under your chin, including your hood, without being too snug that it's going to, to uh, cut off any circulation. There's lots of different helmets on the market, varying from this Kevlar one with an open and closed vent structure in it, um, down to the lighter weight helmets um, that are easy for travel. The important thing is, is that your head's protected if you're scootering, if you're cave diving, if you're inside a wreck, under ice, or even in a situation where you're just surfacing under a boat, a helmet will protect your head.